Hi everybody, Rachel here, Treehouse Knits. Welcome to episode 45. I had to be outside again, it's so nice today. This beautiful early fall day here in the gorgeous state of Michigan. I'm sitting here in my backyard with the birds and the sunshine and the chillier temperatures. A little morning dew on the patio furniture, but that's okay. Last time we chatted, I had a little giveaway and I asked you all, what was the first project that you favorited on Ravelry? Our winner, we had a lot of people that shared with us what their first project or what their first favorite item was, their first favorited item was on Ravelry. And random number generator drew Joanne Thorvildson. And she said that her first favorited pattern on Ravelry was Zuzu's Petals. And I made Zuzu's Petals, 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 Petals. So I pulled it out of the finished objects stash. Here's my Zuzu's Petals. This was a cowl that was really popular, I wanna say maybe back in 2009, 2010. Um, and I used a Freya hand paints. This was one of the first times I used Freya's hand paints. Freya hand paints, I think you call it. And I loved how the yarn did most of the work. An easy lace pattern. This is the back of the cowl. And you just wear it like this. A really easy cowl to wear because the upper neck part is much smaller than the lower. I thought when I knit it that it was going to be much bigger and kind of go over my shoulders, but it doesn't. It sits nice in a coat. Have I worn it much? No, not really. But um, it was just fun to hear what Joanne said was her first favorite and remember that I made it as well. You know, that thread or those comments from last time really took me back to when I started Ravelry because I think a lot of you started around the same time I did, which was in about 2008. That was when you had to put your name in to wait in a queue to be allowed entrance onto Ravelry. I'm gonna take this off now. Don't need it quite yet, but will soon, that's for sure. So anyway, Joanne, let me know that you got this uh, that you heard that you are the winner and I will send to you a prize. So just shoot me back, just um, either shoot me an email or you can leave me, yeah, shoot me an email and leave me your mailing address. You can reach me at treehousenits at gmail.com or you can go into Ravelry and I'm Treehouse Knits and just send me a direct message. Uh, message. We've also come to the end of a knit along that myself and the beautiful Earth Tones girl Denise and I were running the last couple of months, the Summer Mitten Cal 2019. We have finished the Cal. And I just wanna thank you for all of you who participated. We have a really nice finished objects thread of which I've pulled a name from, as well as the second draw from the chatter thread. So I'm just gonna get right into it, let you know who won, and then we can move on with the podcast. So the um, chatter thread second winner, random number generator, gave me the number that belonged to MMIT, that's Mary from San Diego, and Mary made the Merit Mittens by Skein Deer. If you go, I'll insert a picture here. They are a beautiful yellow and white mitten. Well done, Mary. Just let me know that you heard this, and I will get out to you a beautiful prize, which was from Legacy Fiber Arts. And then our finished objects thread, gorgeous finished objects thread that we had. The winner from that who wins the, um, I think it's the Baker's Dozen from the Woolly Thistle. That's Corrine from the Woolly Thistle, the Baker's Dozen of amazing color work yarn that is um, the Jameson and Smith yarn. And that is down River Knitter. That's Marilyn from Michigan. Congratulations, Marilyn. She made the Songbird Mittens, and those mittens are one of my favorite patterns on Ravelry. Congratulations. Congratulations to both of you who've won 
I hope you enjoy your summer inspired mittens in winter and do get back to me and let me know your mailing address and I will send to you your prizes. Actually, Marilyn, I am going to just pass along your name to Corinne and then you can go ahead and get in touch with her at the Woolly Thistle and uh, she will mail out your prize to you. So thank you for participating in the Summer Mitten Cal. And thank you, Denise, for being a beautiful hostess with me. Okay, so now that we've got the administrative stuff out of the way, let's uh, jump right into the rest of the podcast. I have a couple finished objects. I have a few works in progress. I wanted to share with you a little bit of what our our local knitting guild is doing this year, share with you my visit to the Fiber Festival here in Michigan in Allegan County. I also did get a few acquisitions in the mail, thought I'd talk a little bit about a book or two that I'm reading, and that'll round out the podcast today. So, okay, so let's talk about my first finished, finished object since the last time we were together. It's actually been mailed out already. I'll insert a picture here of it. This is the Pebble Beach shawl. I knitted in the medium size and I used Leading Men Fiber Arts in the beautiful colorway Alien Attack. Good memory, Rachel. I knit that in mind for my Aunt Margaret, who I have wanted to knit a shawl for in a very long time. The colorway, I actually purchased thinking of her and I purchased it at Yarn Con a couple years ago. I think. Maybe it was this last year. I don't know. But it's a really neat transition gradient from a really bright acidy yellow into a chartreuse acidy green, if that makes any sense. And my aunt loves bright colors and uh, she really can pull them off. So I knit the Pebble Beach, which I absolutely love. I know I've shared it with you before, but it's a really fun, easy knit. And I think it's a modern take on a lace shawl and can be worn beautifully both ways, um, tied in the front or tied traditionally with it in the back and the tie in the front like a traditional kind of granny type shawl. It's also a wonderful, um, I think all of Helen Stewart's patterns are really great if you're using a specific set of yarn. I have this gradient set. And I say that because in the pattern, it gives you what percentage you've used as you go row by row. And that helps you know if you're gonna have enough yarn in the end. And when you're only given a set number of skeins and you want, and that's all you can get, all you have, you can modify the um, project a little bit as you go so that you get through all the colors. I wanted to make sure that that green really came out and I didn't, only get through four of the five colors. You know what I mean? I think many of you have ex probably experienced that like I have. The other finished objects that I have are socks. <laughs> I had a little bit of sock debacle. The first pair that I finished, have I shown you this one before? I'm not sure. This was a yarn called Wolkenspiel by Zitron. It's made in Germany and it's a really thick sock. Cool patterning on the machine. I think it did a really nice job and really there was no problem knitting this particular pair up but it was when I got to these socks by it's a Lana Grossa wool but it's partly cotton too. It's 45% cotton, 35% or sorry 45% wool, 35% cotton, 13% Palamid and 7% Elite PBT. I have no idea what that is, but I love these colorways. I think I got these as a gift. And you can kind of see, uh, they're different lengths. <laughs> so if I line it all up, this sock is longer than this sock. So these will be probably a pair that I wear on my own in the house. Um, or I, I could cut out a portion of this ribbing, but then the ribbing would be longer on this one. I don't know. I think these are just gonna be socks for me, but isn't that a cool colorway with the pink and the orange and the blue and the brown? I thought that was a really cool colorway. That's Mylan Weight Lana Grossa. 
it's probably a several years old kind of skein. And then this is also the same yarn brand, just a different type of striping. Really pretty as well. Um, this one I think I did okay with the length. Pretty okay. One's a little shorter than the other. I was learning. I was learning. One thing that I've discovered is a new needle. Oh my gosh, you guys, you have to get these needles if you're in the market for them. You can tell I got these for $14.50 at, uh, I actually got them at the Michigan Fiber Festival. I got three different pairs of them. This one, I got a 32 inch size one, which is really ideal, that size for knitting in the heels and toes of my machine knit socks. If I were doing two at a time, completely hand knit socks, I'd get a 40 inch size one. But do you see the needles? They have these little ridges on there and they're square. But they're still the slip, they still have the slickness that I love in an Addy. And the point is fabulous for SSKs, knit two togethers. I love these needles so much. I've used them on socks. I've used the size four, 32 inch on some mittens that I'll share with you later. And I think I got the other pair in a size six, 24 inch for shawls. I absolutely love it. I, even though it has those bumps on it, it's still as slippery as usual, but the grip is a little bit better when you're holding them. These are a joy. I love the cord. And as usual, the Addy join is I think the best in the world. If you happen to ever get an Addy that has a join that isn't smooth, you've got a defective product. Take it back to your yarn store, they'll give you a different one. In fact, it's probably a good idea to always just check the joins before you check out when you buy these types of needles because Addies should, Addies have amazing joins. They are so smooth. Anyways, love these needles. Some other socks that I finished. Well, this is one of the debacles. I ran out of yarn. So I, I got this one done, almost done, with you can see the heel in there and the toe is done. And all I have to do is seam up the ribbing. This one, I completely ran out of yarn. So I have not enough yarn to make the heel. I don't know. This is er very early on, one of the first I used. This is a Saketa or Sakata by Plymouth. Again, a really old skein that I had. I think my mother-in-law might have uh, given, I'm, I'm positive she gave this to me early on when I started knitting. Uh, so either I will take these out completely because, the, you know, it's not a lot of skin in the game when you use the knitting machine to make the socks. I might do that or I might just have fun and find like a, a black heel or something in one of them and have a, you know, a pair of socks that doesn't match, but would be great for around the house. So that was another knitting debacle. This is a pair. This is, oh, I wish I had the tag with me. This is a striped pair. Let's see if the color's coming. It's kind of cool. It's, yeah, it's coming out right. It's, a, it's a, got black, maroon, purples, and then the stripe is a rosy color, a melon color, yellow, gold. Fun pair of socks. This is, uh, the yarn is Three Irish Girls yarn. I picked this up at, um, I think it's called the Wisconsin Craft Market in Madison. And uh, I just have to finish these up, sew in the ends. And I'm gonna wait to put the heels in when I figure out who's going to receive these socks. Then I will put them in at the right, right point. But at least I've got the toes done. And then this is another pair that I've gotten the toes done. Just have to sew up the uh, cuffs there. Look at how that came out of the machine. This is a really old pair. Oh, I bought this yarn in, when I lived in Tacoma, Washington. There was a little yarn store in a town nearby called Puyallup. I think I might have a few viewers in Tacoma and Puyallup. Um, they had a yarn store there that was in a little house. Might have been like, uh, it was a little yellow house. Was it called Little Yellow House? I forget. I don't remember the, gosh, who, I don't remember the, 
the uh, maker of this yarn, but I really thought it was cool because it was yellow and gray. You didn't see a lot of yellow and gray back then, hand dyed. And that was back in like 2009, 2010. So you can tell I'm really going through my stash. I have been using this bag that I got a few weeks back at the uh, Wool and Honey event where they had uh, the Grocery Girls, Mrs. Brown's bags. I love this. It's a short tote with a really wide bottom and it just works so well to put in my socks in a row. Well, I've kind of messed them up now, but I'm really loving just always having socks, heels and toes that I can work on and finish up. Um, you know, all in one place. And I always keep in it my sock needles. And then I got this really cute bag up at the same event. And I showed it to you last time, but it has, I kind of tricked it out <laughs> and put all the tools that you'll need for finishing up the socks. Okay, so that is my sock story. Some duds in there, some good ones. I uh, do have a whole queue of sock yarn that I want to put through the machine next and get ready for Christmas again. All right, let's talk works in progress. We are starting next Tuesday, our guild year. I uh, lead the Greater Grand Rapids Knitting Guild here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We are now four years old this year, and every year we've done a cal or a knit along with our group. This year, everyone expressed interest in learning how to knit selbu mittens. I did a short talk for everyone last year about selbu mittens and shared with them all the mittens that I've knit and still have and they expressed interest in doing that as a knit along so I went on Ravelry and I found a free pattern that is just a standard Selbu mitten it is called the Norwegian Selbu mitten <laughs> how's that for a title and it's by let me show you the cover here it is just your basic Selbu style mitten um, what we're going to do though is a little differently. I have made a chart with a cuff that has um, a Latvian braid, some color work, and then another Latvian braid and then goes into this pattern. It's the basic Selbu Rose, that eight point star pattern, and then the um, thumbs are just that basic pattern right there. What I really like too is the palm gives everyone a rest, a color work rest. It's very easily memorizable. This pattern is by Stephanie Kanich. So check it out. Um, I am knitting the prototype. What I'm doing is knitting one mitten and then I'll knit the other one along with everyone as I lead them through the knit along. And Here is where I'm at with the mitten. And there you can see the cuff that I designed for the mitten uh, with the Latvian braids, the right leaning and left leaning. And then there's the back and you can barely see my, my waist yarn in there. It's a really light pink, not the best color. I should have something brighter, but that was what was on hand quickly. So all I have to do yet is do the decreases up to the tip and then insert the thumb. And what we're gonna be doing is we're kicking it off next Tuesday and then every month after that, we're gonna just work on the mitten together. I'll be demonstrating the Latvian braid, a little bit of demonstration on color work. Another meeting we'll talk about this section here and how to increase left and right and how to hold the waist yarn in there. I do have actually a couple of videos in the Treehouse Knits uh, on the channel of me doing that if you're interested. And then uh, we'll talk about how to decrease for the top, another meeting as well as inserting the thumb and continuing in the correct patterning. So, oh, and I think also what I'm gonna do is share with everybody how to line them in. So that'll kind of wrap up our, our uh, mitten kill for the year. The yarn that I'm using 
is fabulous. I love this yarn. First of all, the gray yarn or that lighter color is a three, I think that means ply. It's just the, the DK or the sport weight Rauma Stricke yarn. And the blue that I'm using is this gorgeous Norsk Pelsaw by Hillsvog. I love this yarn. This yarn has so much, I wish I could get better, better visual for you, but it looks like it's lit up from within. And I think it's just the way that, I believe that this is a light gray yarn in its natural state that then they over dye with the blue and that gray just in person, it just feels like it's lit up. And I love the little bit of halo it gives. It's a really sturdy yarn, a really sticky yarn, so perfect for the mittens. While I don't mind uh, a hardier yarn on my hands, it's really luxurious when you have some extra mohair or a, a little bit of cashmere that you can knit a liner in. So your hands are really soft, but you've got the, um, the beauty of the color work in the more stickier, hardier yarn. So that's the plan there. I am using these amazing new Addy Rocket Squared. Love them so much. You can see there. And I think that's all I wanted to share with you about on those. If you have never knit Selbu mittens before, that would be a really great free pattern for you to check out. And thank you for putting that free pattern out there. One of the things that about this particular pattern, that was a close up. <laughs> one, of, one of the things I thought was kind of interesting about this pattern, and it's free so I can show you, is that if you look real closely, the designer has put this really faint red line through there, and she's done it also on the palm of the mitten, so that when you read the chart, um, she's done that so that you know where to best divide if you're using, divide your, your stitches if you're using four double pointed needles. I like to do my mittens on magic loop, but I still, I thought, well, I'll put stitch markers at least on this, uh, on the front side, I'll put a stitch marker where that red line is and that'll just keep me on track. If I get to the stitch marker and I'm on track, I continue. If I get to the stitch marker and I'm off, I know I need to go back and repair a shorter amount than if I got all the way to the end. I'd have to tink back farther. I thought that was a really nice um, tip for those of you who are newer to color work in general. Feel free to mark up your project and put a line down the center or wherever you think would be a good spot for you to just kind of make sure you double check and make sure that you're on track. Uh, also, while I liked using in the past uh, highlighter tape to cover, I really am loving these bigger post-it notes. I love how it really covers it well and it keeps one end unstuck so you can just peel it and move, move its way up. And I find that one post-it note has enough stick on it to last through the number of rows. But by, by the time you get to the end, it starts to get not as sticky. But um, use those post-it notes to cover up. You can still see through the post-it note enough to see what's coming down the, down the way there, but I just like how it covers it better. And, it, and I, that note does not cover the whole row. That's okay. That seems to be working fine for me on this. So that was just some of the little tips I wanted to share with you on the mitten. <clears throat> and back to the uh, guild. We are starting our fourth year this coming Tuesday, September 10th, from 6 to 8. So if you live in the Greater Grand Rapids area, we meet once a month. It's usually the first Tuesday of the month, but because of Labor Day, uh, we've made it the second Tuesday of September that we're meeting. Come join us. We, um, every meeting, we you have a few announcements. We usually have a speaker or some sort of demonstration and then we do a lot of show and tell and learning from each other. It's just a great group. So if you have any interest, now would be a great time to join in. We do have several newer people coming to this meeting on Tuesday and we just would love to meet you. We're trying to create a community here in Grand Rapids of like-minded knitter aficionados. Michigan Fiber Festival. That was a fun time. I actually went with my mom and dad and we drove down there 
got there before, right before it opened, found a great parking spot, enjoyed walking around. It was a beautiful day, beautiful breeze. It couldn't have been prettier. Lots of more, I think there were more booths this year. I really enjoyed the changes that they made. Um, one of the things that I saw for the first time, I learned about this company called Felted Sky out of Ann Arbor. I picked up one of their needle kits, their needle felting kits. I got the evergreen trees. Aren't they cute? My dad actually picked up a kit as well, so that might be something fun we do together this winter. The evergreen trees even came with the little stumps. Here, I'll open up the box. This, this booth was beautiful. You can tell a lot of time, care, and financial investment was made in making this booth so welcoming, so welcoming. Um, it comes with a beginner's guide to needle felting. It comes with the pattern that you need to kind of lay things out. And then it also comes with a link to the website where there are really nice tutorials. I, I briefly checked out the tutorial on this particular kit and I feel confident that I can do this. But here's the kit, all set. Isn't that done well? They had beautiful options, not only uh, 3D kind of kits, but also kits that you can frame or uh, in a frame, or they've kind of gone to framing in the in a, um, a hoop, an embroidery hoop, and they were so cute. I especially loved. Oh, they had one that was um, oh la a lavender field. They had sunsets. I think my dad got the one that was succulents. So I'm sure we'll share the when we do the felting together. But I just, I couldn't resist getting a kit from them. That's really all I got at the Fiber Festival. I have plenty of other things to work on and, and I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed by all of the things I wanna do right now. I know that's just kind of the nature of the fall season approaching and that's when we Michiganders kind of hunker down <laughs> into our homes and and make them as cozy as possible and get indoor things done. And I'm starting to feel overwhelmed by all the indoor things I wanna get done this winter. So I'm just gonna stop <laughs> with, with some of that. On that note, on that note, last year I, well you, if you've watched the podcast, you know that I have an electric eel wheel, spinning wheel, that I got on a Kickstarter a couple years ago. It's a, I don't have it with me right now, but it, you've seen me spin on it. I, I really like it. The price point was just right. I didn't know if I'd enjoy spinning or not at the time, and I love having an electric wheel. Since then, the same company, uh, Robots, Chasing Robots? Robots. What is their name? Oh my gosh. Dreaming! <laughs> Chasing Robots. Is that a band? Dreaming Robots. Maurice is the owner. He came up with an even smaller electric wheel that could, pre that could be produced even cheaper. And just watching the whole process with him, he's so good at communicating with us where he's at in the pro where he was at in the process. Um, just really interesting to follow along how all the parts are made, getting the parts put together. Yeah, and he's sold thousands of the. I think the purpose of these is to, for every person to be able to access some sport some sort of spinning wheel regardless of um, how much they can pay <laughs> spinning wheels are very expensive and so for a lot of people it's impossible to even think about starting the hobby of spinning but these electric eel wheels for under a hundred dollars came in a box now this box I'm gonna put it next to my head so you get an idea I mean it's small my hand. I have a big hand, but that's that's a small box. I couldn't believe it came like that. And it's all in here. So what I got was, I wonder if I have a packing slip. Here it is. Look at how tiny this is. Here's my head. See, when you put it up here, it looks bigger. But if you put it next to my head, I mean, it's like 
it's as long as the width of your face. I mean, it is tiny. I got the um, set that comes with all of, I got like seven spools and I got the plug, the extra parts to it. I haven't plugged it in, but you'll see it's got a, an orifice hook on there that's magneti magneticized. There's the bottom of it. I'm excited to try it all out. If it works like my other one, here's a cord you can use to plug it into a USB charging station just to give it more power. It's tiny. I think this would be amazing. I know he was selling them in bundles too. So if you're a spinning teacher or a yarn store that wants to have a class, they, they could invest in these and have have them available. What I like about these electric wheels, especially for a new person, is you only have to you only have to learn how to draft and understand. You can understand how to spin without having to have coordination with your feet and your hands and understand the technology or the whole physics of it all, the pulling and the the drafting and you know what I'm saying. So really cool. I got the black version with the white spools or the cream spools. So I'm sure I will share with you more. And I know I've seen them all over the internet. People really, he sold a ton of these. So I'm hoping everybody really likes those. Another thing I've, I've been working on, I've been, I, have, I have quite a bit of fabric that I've been having fun using in my stash. And I have made a couple of these see-through clear bags for stitching. This happens to be a Jane Austen quote pattern on the back. This quote is a person who can write a long letter with ease cannot write ill. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. <laughs> Anyways, Jane Austen, I used a, um, this is a more of a, um, what am I trying to say? It's just a heavier kind of weight and I quilted the back got a nice um, soft and stable kind of material so it's it's protective and, and squishy and then uh, that's the inside I kind of like them all plain on the front because what you see then is your project and that kind of gets center stage but I will have a few of these I'll be popping in to the Treehouse Knits Etsy shop or on my website, which I haven't figured out yet how to sell on, but these will be going up soon. I thought the pink was kind of fun. I have a few of those that I've made, and this is, I think this is an eight inch hoop, if that helps you. Anyway, these will be in the shop eventually. I'll put on Instagram when they go in there, which leads me to uh, another work in progress, which is my Savior's Praise. Let me show you. I've really gotten into stitching lately. This is a Savior's Praise, and I'm just going to kind of pan it. This is by the Kitten Stitcher, who is Teresa Vanette of Shakespeare's Peddler. And that's a Savior's Praise. And you see in the uh, border that border on here is just so cool there's so much fun in that border this is a replication this is not a um, sampler that a vintage sampler that was created now to re uh, stitch this was made by Teresa Vanette who is a who also does um, sampler reproductions but I kind of liked she's got some fun things like I haven't seen it yet, but I know somebody mentioned there's a chocolate chip cookie in that border. <laughs> but uh, around the border, you'll see the words that come from the Bible verse about love and love is patient and kind and you know the verse. But the greatest of these is love. And I just thought it would be a really, I would like to have this framed in my home. I ended up getting the threads that she called for. Let me just show you how I've kind of set myself up. I am a newbie stitcher. If you've seen any other of my episodes, you'll know that I really, I've only done a few uh, Little House Needleworks kind of things. So this was a big deal for me to jump into this. <clears throat> so I got myself this lap stand. And while I like 
doing this project on a hoop. I've now invested in a Millennium frame, which is coming to me hopefully in the next month or so. But um, that will allow me to stretch on stretcher bars the whole project so I can see it all at once. I have been using old hair clips to hold this thing in place. But what I love about this stand is I can set it on my lap and it's up really high. I've been having neck problems with knitting and I've been going to physical therapy and it is helping me. I'm doing better, but I think stitching has allowed me to do something with my hands, but have it up higher so I don't have to be looking down so much. I'm not gonna take it out of the hoop because I'm just not that good of <laughs> getting things in and out, but here's where I'm at. I've been working on this, you know, here and there. Let's see how close I can get. But here's the setup that I have. Like I said, I'm, I'm rolling up the sides because this is going to be huge. I mean, this is going to be, look at this. This is all that I've stitched so far. I'd say that's about, I don't know, 10 inches. And that is only <laughs> this corner. Look at, oh my gosh. Yeah, I've only gotten to the middle of the top left but that's okay this is a project that's going to take me a while and I'm happy with that I've got a little they call these and um, these these are called uh, needle minders it's a magnet that's on here the magnet is underneath and that's also what I like about this frame is that you can lift it up and snip away to your heart's content any you know it's it's really a nice now I'm, I'm trying to still figure out how to use or what needles I like. This I think is a Bowen needle size 26 and it's okay. It's okay. It's a little small but I'm, I'm used to it now. I'm used to it now. I'm doing this. I'm doing two threads. I'm holding two threads at a time and I'm doing it over two on this linen. And this is linen, by the way. So little tiny stitches. This is a 36 count linen. And I have to use magnification uh, level three readers to do this. But then I, I, it's fine. With those readers on, I can see the holes. I always put my pattern up the top when I'm stitching. And let me just show you how I'm managing the, I don't know, 15 different colors maybe of, of floss that I'm using. Okay, so when the floss came, I see people using these rings. So I thought, okay, I'll put the floss on the ring. Now, of course I have two different brands. I'm using Anchor Floss and I'm using um, Weeks Dye Works. There's four colors of Weeks Dye Works in it, which is basically our version of indie dyed yarn. <laughs> this is like the regular yarn you get at the store and this is the indie dyed yarn you buy online. Well this is. You can see the Weeks dye works. So that's how I had it first and I was looking at numbers and and referring back and then I got smart and I decided to just copy the key laminate it and put it on the hook too so that I can figure out what goes where. That's working okay but once you take a piece of this is um, plied six pieces to let me show you there's six strands in one piece and so you have to take the two strands off and then thread your needle well that leaves you with four strands left so the four strands left I have been looping up here this is a bitsy bob from that's so Kelly Co I love this thing it basically keeps everything organized it's got felt oh, my scissor just dropped it's got felt and it's it keeps the, the thread from falling off and then this has a uh, this is just my scissor cover in there, but there's also an area here where you can store the rest of your threads. Now, if I only had six threads going, I could put the skeins in there, and that's what I've done in the past, but I think this is really cool. She also has a magnet here, so that if you have a pair of scissors or something, you just set it there and it won't fall off. That's so Kelly 
Co. on Etsy. Check her out. And she also has a podcast with Joan from... Joan has a, a bag making company that, that are very well done. Mama Joan bags. <laughs> See, I'm getting better with names. So that's where I am with a Savior's Praise. I know some of you are snoozing right now because you don't stitch, but many of us... Oh, I'm a mess here. Oh. Many of us do other crafts. So I thought I'd share, you, share with you that. <clears throat> I'm really in the mood to do something harvesty pumpkin-y. There's some really cute patterns out there, but I don't know if I should just stick with the Savior's Praise. <sighs> That's one thing with cross stitch and stitching in general. I'm trying not to be like I am with knitting where I've got a stash. If I have something I want to, I want to stitch it. Okay, told you about the Nano. Knit Crate. <clears throat> Here's the latest knit crate. First off, thank you for all of you who use my affiliate link for knit crate. I thoroughly appreciate it. Everything that I make goes back into this podcast, so I appreciate it. It pays for the shipping, for the giveaways, it pays for materials that I need. Or Thank you. You can find the link to the uh, my affiliate link down below. <clears throat> or I have a link on my Instagram link tree. This is this month's. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at the colors. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is Natology Worsted Merino. Colorway Kestrel. I think that's the type of bird. Beautiful. Two skeins. Worsted weight. So it's a total of almost 440 yards. This would make a lot. Here is the booklet. Here are the different membership yarns you can get. The brights, the, what do they call it? The chill out, all natural and energize me colorways, which is neat. Now, instead of you being surprised, you can still be surprised with what you get in the mail from Knit Crate, but you can also choose. So if you're more of a, an earth tones girl, say, and you want to get all natural, you would get this beautiful skein called Bohemian Waxwing. The Energize Me is called the European Robin. Look at that. Gorgeous. The patterns this month. Cute. Leg warmers, socks, shawl. Anyway, knit crate. September 2019, this month, will be Prism. Check out those colors. And I believe the, um, if you go on YouTube, Knit Crate, they have a little look-see. You can watch a video and she shows you, Hannah shows you what the September month crate packages will be. So check that out if you are interested. I know I love getting that little blue box every month. <clears throat> What am I reading? Oh, you know what I forgot to show you? When you're stitching, you have a lot of little ends that you're always clipping off when you're starting new colors, and you get a lot of this. And I was just kind of putting it on the couch and assuming I would throw it out, forgetting about it, and these were just showing up all over the place. I was watching a video by, oh, she's one of my favorite people that I love to watch. She always says bye -zy bye when she's done. She's British from Cornwall. Why can I not remember her name? Nicola Park. I was watching her video at a, um, she was at a stitching retreat kind of thing. And she was doing videos on little tips and tricks that she was learning from people that were at the retreat. And one of the ladies there made an origami box that she would put her little, they're called orts. I forget, it stands for something. O-R-T-S. Hmm, maybe S is string? I don't know. They're called orts, and instead of just throwing them on the table, she made this little origami box. Oh, I had so much fun learning how to fold this piece of paper into this box, and what's neat 
is, you know, you can just put your orts in here and kind of fold it up, stick it in your bag. Some people save these orts, put them in stuff, glass jars, bowls, Christmas ornaments, that kind of thing. But um, I'll put a link in my notes to the origami box. Really fun. I kind of went a little crazy with the folding. Where are my other ones? I made a smaller one, and here's a bigger one. Isn't that pretty? No, I'm not getting into origami. But I, the box was fun to make with paper, just sitting around. Okay, so along the same lines of my stitching, Columbia's Daughters. This is Girlhood Embroidery from the District of Columbia. It's uh, all samplers. Vintage samplers that people have acquired that they've traced back to the DC area as their origin. It's a part history book, part needlework book, uh, and fascinating. There were many teachers in the Washington DC area from the late 1700s into the mid 1800s is really when a lot of this was taking place. Um, they were taught needlework skills, mainly for domestic work, for um, pillowcases, bedding, marking shirts that would go to be laundered with initials, and they would also try and um, teach a bit of religious theological um, ideas within them. So what's neat is people have found these samplers and they can link them back to certain teachers, certain areas. I'm learning about how DC was founded, um, Alexandria, Virginia, uh, Georgetown, and Washington City. They have the pictures of the original samplers in here um, with information on the girls and who they were. One of the uh, people in here was actually related to George Washington. Um, just the colors that they used. In some cases, these samplers were used to show um, potential suitors, the skill level that the young ladies had, and the, these were done by anywhere from 8 to 13 year old girls. So, cool book. And I know that this author, Gloria Seaman Allen, has also done um, some other areas. I know there's a Maryland one as well. So, just kind of learning more about, you know me, I like history and especially the history of women's fiber arts. I mean, this is just really another fiber arts. They would stitch maps. Look at this girl, Sarah E. Atkinson, did a sampler and, and did her cat. <laughs> Big black cat. It says, oh, for an overcoming faith to cheer my dying hours, to triumph o'er the monster death and all his frightful powers. <laughs> She was, I don't think it says, sometimes they put their age, you know, sometimes they would stitch their age when they were a little girl, but you find them with the, um, the age picked out or the date that it was made picked out because they didn't want people to know their true age. Here is Mary Stabler's work. She's age 11 in Alexandria. Another one, I think that might be. Oh, that's Elizabeth too. So if you're interested in learning more about samplers and the history, especially in the DC area, but it really talks about you know, the East Coast, check that book out. Our book club book for this month by Christina Klein, Baker Klein, A Piece of the World. And she was the author of The Orphan Train, if you read that one. This book again takes place in Maine, which the orphan train did as well, but it's based on this particular painting. There's the painting that um, Andrew Wyeth painted. And the painting is called Christina's World. 
You can see it, I'm thinking, maybe at Winterthur Museum. One of the East Coast museums has it by Andrew Wyeth. And the book is all about that girl. So, while it starts out slowly, it builds and builds, and at the end, you have a really interesting way of looking at that painting again and how an artist works and how an artist, a good artist, captures the spirit of what's going on in the painting. Fabulous story if you want to kind of take yourself away, head to Maine, East Coast, Boston, um, and just learn about another time and a different way of life. I highly recommend this book. I gave it four stars. If I could have given it four and a half, I would have on Goodreads, but they don't have half stars. So check out that book. Really, really good. I think that'll do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Treehouse Knits. It's kind of all over the place. That's how summer is, right? You kind of dabble in a whole bunch of different things. Let me just show you kind of where I've been seated this whole time. If we pan over here, there's the infamous treehouse of Treehouse Knits. Maybe you've seen some birds going on at my bird feeder. Let me see if I can zoom in and see what we've got going on there. I guess I can't zoom in on this thing. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great start to September. School's in session here. Boys are busy, busier than ever. I'm back to my job as chauffeur, chauffeur. So I'm in the car a lot. Maybe I'll see you in the car on Instagram sometime. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I appreciate all of your comments. I love reading them and responding to them. That's really what builds the community here. If we didn't do that, it would just be me talking into my phone here. Thank you so much. If you've liked this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I'm pushing 4,000 now and I'm, for some reason that excites me. So I would love to get to 4,000. Like and subscribe, leave a comment below, check out Instagram where I'm Treehouse Knits. If you're in the area, join us next Tuesday live face-to-face -face at our, our first guild meeting of the season. Information on that can also be found in the show notes or on my website, thnits.com. I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you get a chance to do a lot of fun things this fall. I hope you're not feeling overwhelmed right now like I kind of am about all the things I want to get done. Anyway, we'll see you next time on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye.